Hello and welcome to another episode of To Be Honest, a show with a clown, a nerd, a duck, and a degenerate. Well, Pyra just got out of the hospital. How are you feeling, Pyra? <laughs> what, what was the lie you made up it about me last episode? <laughs> why, why wasn't I here? That blatant lie? It wasn't a lie. Well, what was it, was it like again? a half-truth. Did you put on the fursuit head? Yes. Yeah. He didn't specifically request it or anything, right? She made me as like a Christmas present. Yeah. Like, like she, she made it for me. She, she puts came it in on the, the room like Jigsaw and was like, Merry Christmas, want to play a game? And it and gave you the first suit head. I mean, kind of similar. So, so we met up for New Year's. We, we got like an Airbnb. We, we give each other gifts and shit. And then uh, <laughs> she puts this bag on the table. I was like, what is it? And then she gives me a knife to open it. And then she goes, I don't want to <laughs> look. Is like and then Saw. she. Huh? This is like a, a Saw movie. <laughs> she gives me the knife and then she says, I don't want to look and then runs out the room. And I was like, what the fuck? You give me like a nail bomb or something? I, I have no idea what it is. So <laughs> I, I cut it open and then I see this red fursuit head that she made. Oh God, it was it was literally just like carrying a dead dog in my hands, man. It was just, the hair falling off it and everything. It was horrible. I mean, it was well made. It was very well made. I'll give her that. Where'd she but, source uh, the fur? You're kind of scaring me there. Yeah, uh, from a dead I'm dog. Not, <laughs> yeah, she, she's got a lot of dogs. One of them maybe goes missing. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's great because she made it for me, right? And I could barely even get it on my fucking head. Like, I, I don't think I suffer from claustrophobia, <laughs> but I, I felt it putting that on my head because I, I could not breathe. So far, he's got a knife, a bag, and inside the bag is uh, something that's revolting him. It's giving him the vibes of, a, imagine, of a dead Im animal. Imagine, like I go, I go to her apartment. I go to her apartment carrying the fursuit head, and the the dog is just missing. It's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's in the box? What's in the box? Like it was like the end of uh, Seven was Christmas for you. Oh, when you said what's in the box, I thought of that old series Adams did. I didn't even think of Seven. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. That's, 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 that's so, that is so obscure. The he did one episode of it. And it no, bombed. <laughs> and that's what you think of, and not the fucking award-winning movie. You know how they say, like, behind, I don't know, behind every great man is a is an even greater woman. So it's like, behind every degenerate online is, like, an even more degenerate woman. So, like, Nikki's probably the scariest person on my channel. And I'm wondering now if Ida is actually, like, even more out there than you. She's more dangerous. Oh, no, she's, she's more... She's pretty normal, apart from what she draws. So <laughs> yeah, that, that, apart from that little, <laughs> that small little detail. But then she only draws it for you, basically, right? I mean, yeah, pretty much confirmed Dejan, right? I, I would never want to own, like, a fursuit ever, but then she made it kind of, like, half ironic, half wanting... That's how it her starts. Her make one. That's how yeah, it starts. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's how it starts. And then you fall into the abyss. It's probably like, it's like Dante's circle of hell. You're already like, in the abyss, man. You're three. at the fucking bottom. <laughs> oh, definitely not. No, there's worse than me. I I'm at like, how many You're on, you're on the bedrock level. There's still like uh, more below it. Yeah, yeah. There's the abyss right below bedrock. This is a big moment in pyro lore, though, because you had been accused of being a furry who goes to conventions, and, and people who knew you well knew that wasn't true. <laughs> where, but where, now where you finally do have part of a get mascot. that bit from? <laughs> I, what, did he just make it? It's too inventive for him. It's too good. And at the time, furries were kind of like a new phenomenon, at least as far as it being in the in like the public consciousness. So a lot of people were finding out about them for the first time. So there weren't that there wasn't that much like documentation of it as there is now. There was there was like you would Google furries and there would be like let's say fifty pictures that would come what, up. When are you and on a lot about? of them were like, what, like back then or right? Are you yeah 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 like f furries of. Furries came around what, like late seventies, eighties, or whatever. The first fur conventions or whatever. Oh, that's right. They, yeah, like, like you can look back uh, at some like original <laughs> art in the nineties, and it is actually fucking horrifying. It, it's it's like you see the uh, the original fairies in their first suits, and they look like French mimes or something. It, it's horrifying. There was a bit of irony to it at first. It was just kind of like weird fetishy cartoon related stuff, and then. It got a little bit more serious and more serious and people were getting friskier at these parties and fucking in the costumes, whatever. Back then, there wasn't like a as much documentation of the community as there is now. So when people would be Googling fursuits, furries, whatever, a lot of them were convention photos of like a bunch of people. So these rumors started where you were going to these conventions and you were one of the people in this photo. We didn't know which. Is that kind of like how it was? Then? Yeah, I just had the TV character. Oh, wait, no, it was the fucking Foxy character, wasn't it? Jesus. Like, I've still got the PS5 shirt on with the mask. Like, uh, I, I wore that on purpose because I need knew a it would be around. We've come full circle, finally. Like, you didn't have a fursuit, you didn't have a mascot head, and now you 
do. You're actually trying one on. Like, so what you've been accused of, it's like it happened this Christmas. <laughs> the, the best thing is as well <laughs> about the it giraffe is how, part. Oh yeah, the giraffe. Yeah, there's a giraffe. There's like a giraffe. <laughs> or is, it, is it your girlfriend wearing a gir- giraffe suit for Christmas? Yeah, she does. You just flip the camera around. <laughs> like, like the the best thing about it is when she sent me when she gave me that. We, I was debating on trying to get it home. I mean, obviously, like, complete shame, but, like, my case was entirely full, right? So the only thing I could do is, like, fucking wear it. It's like, no. <laughs> I'm leaving it. You, that would have made I, it good for a good video, though. Like, going dressed through for the, the airport. The airport. Oh, my God. Imagine trying to get through security at the airport, like, wearing a mascot <laughs> head. And you missed the whole guest loading, right? Like, you only found out today that Colossal Yeah, yeah, I, I went on to Twitter everybody. and I checked my replies and I had, like, multiple people saying, I'm really sorry that you ended up in hospital, bro. I hope <laughs> you get better soon. And I was like, okay, one person, it's probably just bait. But then I saw, like, seven people in a row and I was like, okay, who, yeah. like, are these bots or, like, who's trying to gaslight me here? People were making art of you, like, needing a rebreather to wear your mascot head. I thought there was no way anyone would believe it. The Patreon server did. So obviously we had to put, well, Jay put a little disclaimer in. Oh, yeah, and the visual Just video. Just in case. But in the Patreon I, 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 server. I, I, I have the best transition here. The best transition to a new topic. <laughs> oh, you know who else needs a rebreather? Nick Avocado Avocado. Huh? <laughs> eh? That's good, right? <laughs> Come on, that get was out. good. That was good. Get out of so here. So what about, no, that was what about that was Nikocado good. Avocado? What's he done now? He's been like falsely copyright striking YouTubers oh, that's pretty right, much. Yeah. And he yeah, got a been... channel with over a million subscribers deleted. You know the sort of memes where they put like the rock eyebrow raise, bass boosted vine thuds, red circles, among us sort of sound effects? Mm. You guys pr- have brains, so you probably don't watch that stuff. But <laughs> he's been he's been <laughs> striking um smaller YouTubers as well as this big YouTuber with like 1.3 million subs called Crackback. Because basically what they did was they made an, a mobile game where he's just collecting, you know, fatty foods. Like, you know, like Temple Run. And then when he fails or something, they put in the crying sound effect. And basically he's going, he's just taken all their videos down featuring that game. Because, you know, you can't technically use someone's likeness in a game for profit, right? Like you have to get permission for that. So I think that's his workaround is he's just claiming or striking all their videos and the guy with 1.3 million subs had his channel deleted yesterday because of it you know if, if they try to argue that it's you know not nikocado's likeness that's complete bs because if you look at the video it's like okay the guy may be from the back it might not be nikocado especially how slim he is to begin with but like he's running around collecting tackies which is like some <laughs> yeah and spicy it has sound chips effects. in america that he always eats like those are in his most viral videos and then at the oh yeah he goes on a mobility scooter which he literally did in the walmart video and then at the very end he he flips up an actual avocado to see how much money he can collect so yeah i mean to say it's not there's no likeness there as complete cap. I just but. think it's more of a, a legal issue rather than a YouTube strike issue, the game. Yeah, I don't think his channel should be deleted. Yeah. But that doesn't sound fair use to me. Yeah. I think Nikocado Avocado may be well, within his rights to have that video taken down. If no, it's it the was same free, but I think it was running game. ads on Th- it. There were ads. I think yeah, that's, that's the, the problem. problem. So like, if you from. died or like complete the level, an ad would play. And I think that this guy would have actually got the revenue. I mean, again, it would have been literal like pennies or cents, right? This guy would have made no money off it. But yeah, I guess like Nick Ocado saw money that's being made of him not going into his pocket. Bye bye. Because he knows how to clout farm, right? What was like, the game called? Avocado bulk. <laughs> fat man fat man runs. That was called oh, yeah, avocado, avocado bulk. But the issue was that Nick Ocado's striking the videos for using his content, you know, like his specific video clips. Because you know it's a meme, right? They they right. edit it within fair use. But I think he's doing it solely because they've used the mobile game in their meme. So he had two strikes two days ago, you know, third strike, your channel gets deleted. Normally, the advice you give is just fight the strike because no one is going to take it legal. Yeah, you know, no one's going to take you to court over but it. But Nick, Nick Ocado has sued like six people. So he's like a special case where what do you actually do there? Because he probably will go as far as to sue you if you keep fighting the strikes. Who's he sued before? I don't know he sued anyone. I'm not too sure. Just like drama, T channels. Uh, I was watching Umpaville's. Uh, video and he said he's 
sued a few people in the past. Like he was even oh, going to sue YouTubers, though. Or yeah, yeah, YouTubers. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, because I, I feel that Nikocado is like. I mean, we all know at this point he plays it up for the camera and that. I feel he's not a genius or anything, but he's definitely like kind of smart. Yeah, he's still shortening his life. How smart can he be? <laughs> he's not as stupid as everyone thinks. I mean, like for example, a year ago, right? I don't know if you remember, he was beefing with uh, with Charlie, with Critical. They were doing some videos back and forth. And then Critical put a video out saying this guy's killing himself for views. And then uh, Critical actually made some claims that, like, Nikocado clapped back at and proved that was, like, bullshit. Uh, I think he said, uh, Charlie said something about how Nikocado now needs a nurse to help him around the house. And then Nikocado was like, that's bullshit. Like, you know, wh where'd you get that from? And then Charlie just turned around and said, oh, it was a tweet I read, lol. Yeah, he's not like a mastermind or anything, but I think he knows how to play the character, but then when to actually clap back when he feels like he can. But yeah, I, I see I see what you mean. If he's been like suing people six in six different instances to then actually go ahead and think that you're going to win a lawsuit against him or he's even going to take you to court. Yeah, I think the actual, just the striking itself is flying under the radar. I think Niles actually, I think you'll have a video out on it, won't you, by the time this episode comes out? Yeah, probably. It, it's so hard to do research on it though because all the videos and pretty much all the evidence got nuked. I mean, Ryan's pulled up a couple of things as reference here. I wa Yeah, I saw most of the videos because I followed the guy, so... It was basically the mo you know, he was advertising the mobile game, but he had like stuff going over the screen, you know, like the text to speech garbage with the rocks talking and the, yeah. the fucking TikTok sound effects. But it was still technically fair use. It's just kind Ryan, of a muddle. Ryan also pointed out as well that you could actually play ads to unlock skins. So that would also be like because it looks like the base character in the game looks nothing like Nikocado, but then there's like there's like a later skin that actually looks like him. Okay. That seems dicey, yeah. I can see someone wanting to, like, if they were already considering whether to come out with a game or not, uh, or they'd said no to games, like, not wanting someone to just, like, make it for them, you know? Yeah, I, I agree with what Corn uh, Lossel said earlier, because it's like, you know, it, he shouldn't have had his channel deleted over it, but at the same time, it's, yeah, I mean, if you're making bank off someone else without, and, and it's so obviously based on him, then... Uh, I don't know. He'll probably have his channel reinstated if he's got a million plus subscribers. Yeah, I, I would assume I don't know, so. man. I yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, I legit wouldn't. Because it was just videos taken down all around the same sort of time, right? So I think that's a fix. It was other It was other YouTubers as well. Who else was hit? They had 100k, I think. No, no, it was a guy called Ender, Ender Chur, and he only had uh, like 10, 50 10 to 50k subs you can get the youtube community up on your side like riled up if you say oh this person's striking down criticism of him um <laughs> everyone will be like what no fair use but if this was he's just trying to keep this uh this bootleg video game from being promoted using his likeness that's that's kind of a different issue yeah, no. Because he doesn't strike down just like he doesn't hate all criticism. He's baiting the criticism. Uh, no, he did, that, he did that's a video with saying. Yeah. Canyon and, he, he, and Oompa. He wants the clout. He loves the clout. It, it, it's like how Meat Canyon, yeah, like you said, Meat Canyon did that animation, like mocking him. Oompaville was mocking him, and then he did videos back. And then Critical as well. Critical criticized him. And then, you know, Critical, like I said, got some stuff wrong. He didn't strike the video because of it. He responded What's and then called him out. So, yeah, he. He's definitely into like, you know, it's like a little Harry Potter Dementor just sucking clout out of people. Attention hog. But yeah, I think, the, I think this just because it kind of like, he didn't see this as criticism. He saw it as like money not in his wallet. So he's like, bye bye. Yeah, because the guys have been making Nikocado avocado memes for like two years at least, right? So only now he has an issue with it because of the game. I think the one other thing though was that, so the lawyer, his manager contacted them to take the game down and the crackback guy was like okay fair enough you know i am monetizing nikocado avocado so they took the game off the app store but then three days later he still got striked and his channel was taken down you know it's almost kind of like did nikocado put those in before the game was taken down or is he just kind of trying to rub salt in the wound mm. yeah it might have been Hard a delayed um because sometimes it'll take 48 hours for your yeah um, yeah who, who was the smaller guy again, not Crackback, the other one? He, he posted on Twitter that Nikocado actually followed him and then briefly unfollowed him. So yeah, he was definitely lurking their Twitters and stuff. I don't know whether that was to see what kind of damage he did or anything. But yeah, he he, know, he definitely knows what he did because he was lurking their uh, socials for a little bit. It's kind of a messy situation. I was even going to make a like meme video to kind of like garner support for the Crackback. But because the lines are a bit blurred, you know, technically he was in the wrong for the game. It was like, do I want to bother doing that? Where I could actually be in the wrong myself, so. Who was behind the game? Was it anybody 
uh, well known? No, no, it was Crackback himself. So, but he probably got someone to code it or create it. But he was promoting the game on his YouTube video by having like edits of like The Rock playing it. Well, speaking of fat pigs, have you heard what's happened to Logan Paul's pet pig Pearl? I'm amazed that you're using the pig transition and not talking about Trisha Paytas for once. Wait, yes. this is this is actual colossal character development. Well, Logan's pig was found next to a dead pig <laughs> in some farmer's field. <laughs> so I don't know, could be her. <laughs> could be her. <laughs> and the headline isn't even R.I.P. Trisha. It's just uh, Logan's pig <laughs> was is being underfed. It was found next to a dead Trisha Paytas. But in other news. Logan mistreated an animal. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, it's just a classic LA YouTuber move, isn't it? I mean, he buys a pig to clickbait a YouTube title, but then the pig outlives is this its when, usefulness oh, I thought you were going to talk so, about... I thought you were going to talk about after uh, he did the suicide forest, right? Uh, he then did another video around his mansion, and he tased a dead rat. I don't know if you remember that. Logan Paul and that pig, I, this is the same thing that happens. This is the same thing that happened to Michael Jackson. It's like he wanted a, he wanted a monkey, <laughs> a chimpanzee to um, be photographed with and to take to uh, like red carpet events and to dress up just like him. But then as it started to get older, it got like violent and dangerous and he had to get rid of it. So like Logan got a pig because his brain thought Instagram, this is going to make some cool yeah. photos. And then the pig got too big and he didn't want it anymore. Yeah, I think he actually thought it was like one of those pigs that stays small, right? And then it fucking became like heavier than him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking, yeah, it's like a, a full, like a one ton hog and not a little pot belly pig that you could keep in the house. Oh, that's horrible, man. So wait, he didn't even like <laughs> give it away to like a shelter or try and rehouse it? No, he it? did. Uh, so when he left for Puerto Rico to dodge taxes or whatever, he was told he couldn't take the pig with him. So, well, of course he couldn't, it was 300 pounds. He decided, according to Logan, he decided to leave it with a nearby ranch. But the ranch then went out of business while he was away. Yeah. This is all again according to Logan. So then the ranch then pawned it off on this nearby farmer, and the farmer couldn't care for it, so the pig was left to rot to fuck in this field next to a dead pig, and this charity found it and made an Instagram post about it, and it's I all figured, happening in I, LA. When the news first broke for like a day before Logan spoke, I just kind of figured there was more to the story, right? And Twitter just wants to dunk on him while he's down. So Yeah, just classic I would, Twitter I, moment. I honestly, Everyone I jumps would believe. to conclusions. Yeah. I, w I honestly, I would believe him. Well, we got three pets. Three pets that didn't end uh, well, that have tragic endings with, with Logan. We've got Kong, the, uh, the tiny little... That's the I, I don't know what breed of dog that was. That tiny little dog that got eaten by coyotes. Yeah. Uh, we've got Maverick, who is still the name of his clothing brand, but that that uh, bird is dead. Was it just old age? Or did it get eaten by the pig I, or something? I think it, yeah, I don't think it was. <laughs> it's all connected. It died of did you died, say yeah. eaten by a pig? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just imagining like Logan gets a new pet and then the new pet kills off the previous pet. Yeah, that's how he gets a new pet. The, the new one will inherit the old one's abilities by just eating it. I, 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 see, I see what Jay means though about like how, you know, people will just dunk because I'm looking at the replies and people are like, it's not the only dead thing he's left in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Well, with Logan, it's like there is so much going wrong there and people sense that he's like an awful exploitive person. And so they'll find an issue to use as a proxy to call him a bad person. So it's like any little misstep and all of this rage comes out, but he's building up the rage through all of this other stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, he, he actually built up his respect again, though. That's the thing, because Jake's always kind of been hated, to be fair. He's kind of embraced that the problem child thing. But Logan actually got his respect I wouldn't say he built after... up his respect again. He got nah, more nah, nah, self aware. He, he was on a redemption arc. After tying himself, like, as a conjoint twin to KSI and doing the Prime stuff, he, he, people kind of almost forgot for a little bit, I think. But then, you know, this whole NFT stuff, that's kind of actually brought everything back how much of a little he's a little bit of a ladder climber i think pretty sure he was doing the nft stuff before he was doing prime oh yeah but, but it was never that public he'd always keep it on the down low right he'd only promote it to his little worms he'd just basically do the equivalent <laughs> of insider trading did you see that tweet by the way that he made the matrix is real pray you never become its target i mean jay was saying <laughs> he's trying so hard to be tate even Andrew Tate has responded to that, and he's just completely dismissed it. I think he called him the yeah. Matrix. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you are the Matrix. <laughs> you are the yeah, Matrix. Because you, you are an agent. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> you are the mage. Not even you are an agent, just you are the mage. Well, <laughs> Logan, actually Logan's Christ. main goal and the main currency with him is attention. He wants attention, power, money. So he gets jealous he, he of the He literally things admitted that himself that KSI. He was jealous yeah, of he, coronavirus. He admitted that KSI saved his he was, career. He was jealous of coronavirus and jealous of Tate. Uh, both of those came through on either like impulsive or through one of Big Mike's blogs. In the case of uh, Tate, Big Mike in one of his stupid uh, vlogs was talking to Logan right at the peak of, of Tate, like catching everyone's attention in a negative way. And he was like, no, we talked about this last night, how we were kind of jealous of Tate or whatever. And, and Logan goes, I think he should fight me. And he's looking like kind of dark. So Logan like is jealous of Tate's ability to like, you know, to, to get all of this attention in negative or positive way, you know, I don't know. I guess him wanting to attach himself to whatever momentum that Tate has, whether it's through fighting him or through using his matrix line. It's just <laughs> funny that Tate himself rejected it. Like, no, don't use my line and come from my fan base. Fuck you. You're the problem. Uh, Cause he knows though that Logan is just a literal ladder climber. Like he clung onto KSI. He even admitted in interviews that KSI saved his career. Like he was in decline. And then the boxing stuff like basically saved him. He'll cling. It's just typical LA type. He'll cling onto anything for dear life that it, propels his career and i swear like i, I don't want to be like fucking reddit armchair therapist but people like that will always just be the fucking most miserable people because they'll just always see like who can i cling on to next the rage that came out at him for the for the japanese forest video was built up from a bunch of other scandals that hadn't caught as much attention but do you remember he was courting controversy by pretending to have his brains blown out against the window um, oh other things. yeah! Oh my God! That that that's like when he had baby face, right? Like before he grew the beard out and that. that <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, I don't that's remember pre beards. That. Logan Paul. I just era. remember the colorblind stunt that he did. Right, there's there another one. So he pretended to be colorblind. So he had these things where like people were starting to see like this guy will do anything, including crying and pretending to be colorblind just to get just to have a viral video. Obviously doing. A prank that he's been like gruesomely murdered and everyone watching is like five <laughs> and then he went to uh vidcon without being like an announced guest or without using security and he just caused like a, an actual crushing incident or like a mob but he by just being there and recording himself causing everyone to recognize him so he created like a stampede he like a, an actual like public menace Everyone kind of says the the meme of like everyone in LA Lebad like influences, but it's because it is I mean, just such true. a well, not not all the case, but but it is just such a hive of like. They should influence. just fucking carpet bomb the whole city at this point. Like they're all the same. <laughs> they're all the fucking same. I mean, I, so okay, shit. okay. Here's an example. City I've right? visited. Here's an example. I'm sitting on a channel with like 4.7 mil at the minute, right? Yeah. And I'm in the UK. Someone in LA with 20,000 subscribers could easily get more contacts than me in like a week. Yeah, but 90% of them will just backstab them later down the track. Well, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes, very true. Very true. Well, what I like about LA is it is a city full of people who are trying to make something happen. And if you've ever tried to like build a business with your friends, you know, like they sometimes it works out. Most of the time it doesn't because they aren't trying to actually like climb and make something work. So so the opposite side of that is it's all people who are all trying to find an opportunity and to put pieces together. And so you go to a party in LA and it is all people who are just trying to figure out how does your puzzle piece fit into this puzzle piece. So it is like it is hard to make friends there, but it's easy to build a business. It's all fake though. It's all fake. Yeah. It's all false. Yeah, I've I, yes. I barely go to like these YouTuber parties. I, I've been to a couple, uh, and I've been to a couple in the UK. And yeah, it is just it is just networking hell. It's like, what do you do, bro? I do YouTube. It's like, oh yeah, let's network. It's like, what do you do? It's like, oh, I do paintball. It's like, <laughs> fuck, I don't do paintball. Fuck off. I actually was on the me. side of rice gum in that incident where like Gabby Hanna flips on the camera and is recording him. Like, what did she say? Like. All right, let's have a let's have a rap battle. And it wasn't like she'd asked him ahead of time, like, "Hey, do you want to record something for Twitter?" She just ambushed him and tried to like, you know, beat him at improvised. What did he do again? <laughs> he smacked her he phone broke her or phone something, and then paid okay. for it. Yeah, he grabbed it out of her hand, smashed it. Yeah, that's right. Instead of like being, you know, embarrassed online, he that she did the caveman smash. Do I run or do I smash? Yeah, <laughs> disproportionate response for sure. But well, what's your option? Because she just recorded something that might be embarrassing, and then she's going to use it for clout. Someone is someone is shoving a camera in your face like that. You're in an awkward position. What do you do? Well, celebrities have had this problem with paparazzi, where the paparazzi will 
ambush them when they're like not ready to be photographed and so they'll you know they push them out of the way and then all of a sudden it's an assault and it's like oh why did you you know the, the photographer will say you're breaking my arm like there's this famous uh, <laughs> video of of uh, alec baldwin where the photographer's like uh, you're breaking my arm you're breaking my arm <laughs> photographers being ambushed by paparazzi who aren't expecting it and then they get pushed or shoved out of the way and then they they well, you, you were just on about like general paparazzi confrontations anyway because those guys are complete vultures like they will literally go up to anyone and you can tell uh <laughs> it, they're like the passive aggressive ex they'll say stuff that almost seems calm but they know will get under their skin like, like you've seen the one i'm sure where uh kanye's pulling out his car at like four in the morning and they're like yeah. good morning kanye <laughs> yeah, so, shut let the fuck up and then I saw uh, who's the actor that played Spider-Man the original the Sam Raimi trilogy Maguire. Yeah, you send the confrontation with him, right? And he screams at them like he he was wearing like the because oh, the they're in the way of his day. car. He can't oh, actually yeah, no. drive anywhere. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm totally on his side. But again, like seeing that side of him, you know, like Venom suit, like holy. Yeah, <laughs> you no, I'm pretty just much got always... out of rehab and you you had a problem with drinking. They'll be waiting outside of the restaurant for you to come out, and they'll be like. So, did you have a couple drinks in there? They'll say something that's meant to yeah. get under your skin. And if it does, then that's the footage we see. I don't know how people like that exist today. It's just kind of like the sociopaths for pay. It's just like... Yeah, I love how paparazzi just have no respect anyway. It's great. You know, they tracked down PewDiePie once, right? When he was in America. I might have mentioned this before. It wasn't anything big, but he went to like a dinner and then uh, like TMZ did an interview with him. And then I messaged him and I was like, how the fuck, what'd you do with TMZ? And he was like, no, no, I didn't. They literally like tracked me down. They like called up every restaurant asking if I had a re reservation there. You know what would be a really good YouTube channel idea? Cause you know, the paparazzi, the people with the cameras are always filming the celebrities are never on camera themselves. They're the ones filming. So you make a YouTube channel where you go around to these celebrity functions, but instead of filming the celebrities, you film the paparazzi filming the celebrities and get them on camera and capture their reactions and see what they're doing and you make a whole youtube channel based around that man some of them would love that though that would be so good that sounds shit nah nah because they'll just like i could imagine it like they'll just hide behind the camera and say nothing like little mannequins what paparazzi do is they use publicly available information online against you if you start filming some literal who what what, what ammo you got against them they're just going to hide behind the camera and they're just going to shut up if there's like an ongoing controversy or something they will bring that up and be like oh so what about this thing you know exactly you capture them in the act of doing all this shady shit and then you have the documented proof like the full picture i think it would make a good youtube channel i mean no one else is doing it some of those people are trying to make a name for themselves tmz had a show where it would show their newsroom and people were you know trying to get on camera for coming up with the headlines for TMZ. And God. the people who ask these questions start to get a, a reputation themselves. So I think there would be a subset of those paparazzi that would love that. Like they do want to be influencers too. They're going to get pissed off because you're going right up with a camera to their face now. You know, the shoe is on the other foot. They're not going to like it. Right. Well, the press hates it when you use their tactics back to them. If you start criticizing the press or you do anything, if you get your attention, pointed back at their article and saying like this is a hit piece this they'll be like they'll, they'll complain that uh, the power dynamic there is unfair <laughs> um yeah that would be it's typical for the press to not like their own tactics being pointed back at them one thing i saw with a, a paparazzi confrontation that was great like this will probably be the one time in my life i compliment kim kardashian but the security she hired because obviously you know she's basically probably the most popular woman in america that has to deal with that shit every day her security have like this advanced technique because because you know what they're like right if you push the paparazzi away they'll claim assault and you know that they, they've probably got every law in the book just like pre-wrote on a sticky note but uh what the guy did was the security he just had this flashlight this super strong led flashlight and he turned it onto the flash setting so it was just violently pumping out like you know just led lights in their face like imagine if one of them actually had a what was it photo uh what's it fucking called i was gonna say photosynthesis what's it <laughs> why am i thinking of schizophrenia Seizures. what's the th what's the thing where you got sensitivity to flashing lights uh, um, epilepsy epilepsy uh, what did i think of schizophrenia? <laughs> photosynthesis <laughs> just fucking plants <laughs> One of them just starts killing everyone. Yeah. It's not even late for you. You don't even have an excuse. Just brain soup. Schizophrenia. Yeah, one of them had schizophrenia. <laughs> oh. But yeah, no, photosensitivity. Yeah, no, it'd actually be over for that uh, paparazzi. But yeah, I just thought that was kind of funny because it just made all the footage absolutely useless. They could still get still frames in between the shots, obviously. Yeah, but yeah, I thought it was kind of kind of genius.
so I was looking at, uh, you wanted to talk about a, a movie uh, where the director has come out complaining about piracy, that people are streaming it uh, illegally or they're, they're torrenting it. Yeah. But a lot of the people in the replies on Reddit are saying that they couldn't even pay for it if they wanted to, that Shudder is like not available in their country. Well, that's why you need ExpressVPN. <laughs> you know what's not fair? The fact that Netflix hides Such thousands of shows and man. movies from you based on your location and then has the nerve to increase their prices on you. That's right. They've just raised their prices once again. Now you could just cancel your subscription in to. protest, or you could be <laughs> smart about it and make sure you're getting your full money's worth by using ExpressVPN, like I do. <laughs> See, you might not know, know that what's on Netflix in your this. country is completely different <laughs> from what someone in the out. UK or Japan has on theirs. Using ExpressVPN, I can can control which country I want Netflix to think I'm in. ExpressVPN has over 90 countries to choose from, so every time I run out of stuff to watch, How do you run I just out of switch stuff to, to another watch? country like... to unlock new shows. Right now, I'm watching some foreign gibberish show. It's not on uh, US Netflix, but with just one tap of a button, <laughs> like just ExpressVPN how lets me it change is, my location to the weird foreign country to watch I'm it. And and here's the very best loud, part. Like it's not <laughs> Just Very for loud. Netflix, you can use ExpressVPN to unlock shows on other streaming services too. I like to like use Shutter. it to watch BBC like iPlayer. Shutter. It's free and only available in the UK. ExpressVPN is also super fast and works on your phone, laptop, even smart TVs. So you can watch your shows on the big screen with zero buffering. So stop paying full price for streaming services. And only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash tbh. Don't forget to use my link so you can get three extra months of ExpressVPN free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash tbh. Expressvpn.com slash tbh. Tbh. Fucking hell, that's hard to do with a fever. <laughs> well, you really, you're really worth selling it, man. I'm definitely going to use code TBH to get ExpressVPN. It's only supposed to be 60 seconds. Hey, I was going to say, bro, when I get like a sponsor, I will, they'll give me like 25 points and then yeah, they'll and link some examples. Like two. this YouTuber, yeah, be like, this YouTuber did a very good example and it's just him crying at the new Star Wars trailer or something. It's just like, I, I just do like three points and that's pretty yeah. much it. But I respect the dedication, even though we get no extra money for it. <laughs> And we probably lose viewers. <laughs> You're like over-specking the part of the skill tree that's read the entire copy and we're under-specking the personal uh, anecdote side. Until they tell us otherwise, I'm going to keep doing it exactly this way. I personally use ExpressVPN myself. It's very important that everyone has a VPN because there are some very malicious people out there that will target you and put dirty things on your computer pirate and <laughs> that's why you need an express VPN. What do you mean, I mean they me? could do it. They could do it. Everyone knows what's on my fucking computer now, bro. Got nothing to hide. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Right, share screen. Share screen. Let's have a look. <laughs> He's watching the fucking Nintendo Direct again. Like, just every time. Are we going to talk television. about the film and Skinner Marine Corps? I, I thought we weren't. Yeah, did you use ExpressVPN when you attempted to watch this movie that you would like to talk about today, Pyro? Of course I did. I used ExpressVPN and I watched it on Shudder. Hey, we're not Legally. getting sponsored by Shudder. Don't Legally. give them a shout out. <laughs> well, it's the only place you can watch it. If I say Netflix, they got a nose of fucking pirate. I've cut that bit out. <laughs> Keep cut it that in. bit out, please. So how did Skinnerink get uh, get on your radar, Pyro? I, th I think Jay Jay brought it up yeah, to actually, me. Yeah, uh, actually, because you're playing, you're potentially going to do a video on it, right? Spoiler alert for the... Yeah. But how many times have I sent you something and you've ended up doing a video on it? Oh, you should like, probably own a cut of the channel at this point. Yeah, I mean, what, I really what, should. You, right? you, you suggested the platform. To I me. definitely I remember, remember the that. platform. Yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else. Maybe I've said I'd get around to it, and I don't. But yeah, the platform you definitely shield. Skinnerink, you linked. I mean, Jay linked it because he said he was interested in watching it just because of how polarizing the reviews are. Because it's it's literally sat at a at a five, so that's literally half the people like it half the people fucking despise it i'll bet you it's a generational divide i think it's more of like a film bro divide because 
if you're aware of um, Letterboxd, where a lot of like film bros, like people that are like really into film, it's got like a 6.5 on there. Whilst on like the IMDb, the normal site, it's got a five. Is that is that really a term, film bro? So like, if I do my taxes, I'm called a tax bro. No, there's a, of, there's a bit of there's a bit of it's like there's a bit of word for it. But you know when someone's <laughs> a just loser, literally a loser. <laughs> Cine- <laughs> cinephiles, yeah. So I'm not <laughs> oh, touching the it. yeah, that's it. Not touching the low hanging fruit there. But if you see the ratings, <laughs> if you see the ratings on the site, it's kind of it is still polarizing, right? You've got a lot of people rating it as a half a star, and you've got a lot of people rating it. 10 stars yeah, basically you'll stars. have people saying it's dog shit and nothing happens the film me, which is like me. every that's like every a24 film so i'm surprised that people didn't like it but then there are people saying it's the scariest film they've ever seen and it's terrified them that i also don't agree with i think because uh oh yeah it, it, it spread a lot around on tiktok that's it so the film was really hard to watch because it was indie they only had a budget of like 15k like literal micro budget <laughs> they shown it at a film festival but they couldn't actually get a distributor so when they got at the screening, I think there was like a bug or something or someone just like leaked it and it went online everywhere. It was on YouTube for a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit before it got taken down. It's quite and a big bug. <laughs> then it, yeah, then it spreads all over onto TikTok. And then obviously you've got the TikTokers like, because they know they've only got your attention for seven seconds. They sensationalize it. It's like, this is the scariest film I've ever watched. And the only other film I've ever watched was probably like, you know, some the Nicolas Cage film. The worst film to advertise to tiktok is when it's basically a hundred what is it 120 minutes of nothing it's, it's just short of two hours of <laughs> yep literally nothing like tiktok is i i made it i i sent you i made the joke that like you should watch it with family guy on on a second monitor because it's boring like yeah did you did you see the trailer by the way nerd i didn't watch the trailer no okay so if you skim through it, just look at the shots of it. There's a lot of very static shots of just like floors and walls and ceilings. I'm not joking when I say that is the entire film. That's I'm not even that's not 90%. That is yeah. the entire you, you basically never see the characters. There's only two kids in the film. There's no one else in the film. I think there's a mom and a dad as well, but like you basically never see their faces apart from like two shots in the entire film, but it's a lot of like these long drawn out static shots sometime the camera's handheld but apparently the guy who made the film that was his childhood home and then he went back to the house and he was like hi can i film this here like for flea and they were just like yeah that's fine i don't want to come down too hard on low budget indie movies because clearly this is like low budget solution trying to make a horror movie if i set my iphone to start recording and then handed it to a toddler like every day for a month <laughs> what they gave back to me what they recorded i could edit into a movie like this i like how you started by saying i don't want to be too hard on this it looks like a toddler recorded it it does it looks like an adult edited something out of like a dropped phone like you know how there's like found footage is a type of horror movie this looks like dropped phone footage as like bitter as that take sounds that's actually how they did it they didn't give the kids the cameras but they literally filmed in the house for a week and then they just turned it into a film from that i mean that there is like a structure and there is a story but so much of it is literally just filming a tv filming and then a, a jump stairwell. scare every 20 minutes right yeah no it, it's very kind of less sad drawn out static shots uh it's very hard to because if you look at the trailer there's like that horrible noise filter they're trying to make it look like a vhs because it's set in 1995 no they're that's, trying to make it look like film see that that's one of the things that uh, I thought was funny. I think I've complained on this podcast before about how the these apps that have filters that are like multi-generational, you know, you'll have the film filter uh, with le- uh, light leaks and then grain from old film. And then you have VHS filters from the tracking mistakes of VHS. And then you have chromatic aberration from old TVs that you'll get, you know, like the, the kids who didn't grow up with all of those things to know what they relate to, mix them all together and don't realize like, for this to happen, it would have to be like a projected <laughs> movie shot on 16 millimeter that then was like recorded off of a television. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So like and then movie, on VCR as well. Right, right. So then this movie, uh, it says 1995 at the start, but it's using 1975 low budget horror film aesthetic. Like, even that font <laughs> is iron on letters from the 70s. So 
I, the reason why I think they did that also comes back to the budget. Oh, that, that font is what everyone uses now, to be fair, though. Like, uh, Barbarian used that. Stranger Things used that font. Like, like e everyone in horror is literally using that font. It's, it's yeah. the basic bitch font at the minute. It's back now, but that's not 1995 at all. That's 70s. That rounded letters. Like, it looks like one of the versions of the I Love New York shirt. You know what I mean? It, like, that would be on a mug. Yeah, yeah. Like, it looks... It's older than 70s, yeah. I think he wrote 1995 because you, if shooting a 1975 period piece is expensive, you've got to find, like, all of this old furniture that's, like, very rare and picked over. You've got to find... Like, if you wanted those toys on screen, like, in this movie, you'd have to find all 1975 toys. But you can do 1995 toys. That's They're still around. That's a little cheaper. So it's a mix of... Uh, it's a mix of generations and aesthetics in a way that caught my attention as like, uh-oh, this doesn't line up. It bugs me. It's one of my pet peeves is those filters being all mashed together. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't also pick up on, um, or you probably you probably would have if you watched it, but because, you know, the, the whole thing has the grain and it has those projector errors, you know, with the dust on screen. But you'd think if they're doing a whole movie with that effect on that they wouldn't just use a loop. If you if you watch it for more than 10 seconds, you can actually pick out they're using the exact same dust, fake dust, fake scratch oh, particles. You know, it, yeah. it just kind of just rubs the, me the, the wrong way. The same hair shows up again? Yeah, the same hair shows up like every 20 seconds. It's, it's definitely randomized a bit, but it's like you can see the same effect appear again and yeah, again and it's, again it's it's all artificially done which kind of sucks i mean people shitting on the film i 100 percent get it i i enjoyed it personally because the guy who made it he basically runs a youtube channel where he turns people's nightmares into short videos but it, it's basically all kind of the same as this is just walking around a sad dark house but yeah he'll uh <laughs> he'll turn them into like uh short stories but he actually got this one here because I think, like, he said, like, there's a common trend where people would submit stories about how they'd have a nightmare as a kid as they'd be completely abandoned in the house and their parents would either be dead or missing. And then they're just walking around the house trying to find out what's going on. Uh, I definitely remember, like, as a kid when I was literally six, having nightmares of just being in, like, a dark house and then just, like, you know, not knowing what the fuck is going on. Because I guess, you, you, you know, you have so much less to work with when you're, like, a literal child, like, six uh, years yeah. old. The world and you're doesn't inside the exist house outside so much. your house and school, pretty much. Yeah, I, I think they've they've done that pretty well because it does feel like a nightmare. It's very abstract. I mean, there's even a bit in the film where like the walls and the doors just disappear f for no reason, so the kids can't even leave. And I, I remember it's almost like the geometry and stuff doesn't make sense. I mean, towards the end of the film, uh, the the house just turns basically upside down. We're, uh, they're obviously just flipping the fucking camera upside down, right? But yeah, I mean, it's still <laughs> but it's, yeah, they, they still they get a pretty as far good as effect. The, uh, with it. As far as the generational divide on on what, uh, what people of different ages think is scary, this movie has got at least three things in it that seem like it would appeal more to like current internet uh, raised people. There, there's the um, liminal spaces kind of feel to it, like the the way that um, the empty room, Back room feels so very stuff. uneasy and terrifying to, <laughs> to Zoomers. <laughs> I actually haven't seen a review yet saying it's the Backrooms film, but I would actually weep if I saw that. Like, imagine <laughs> just someone from TikTok is like, oh, it's like the Backrooms. It's so scary. <laughs> yeah, the the photo of an empty room shot with a flash or with the you know, camera light, like some accidental photo. People are like, oh, is this the afterlife? Is this is this where I get trapped? Jay was saying like, uh, he made a joke yesterday because the budget was 15K. It's like, how the fuck was it 15K if they got the house for free? And then he said like, it's probably just a Lego set. You know, you buy like a Lego TIE fighter for like, <laughs> Because <laughs> those Lego sets are so expensive now. You buy one for like 15k, the budget's gone. Bye bye. The second internet horror aesthetic that they're using is like the when you see it, you'll shit bricks type photo where you're like, oh, there's something in, hidden in this photo that if you look at it long enough, you'll find it. And they do that for some of these, uh, like the end of the movie is a face that slowly becomes more visible, right? Oh, it, it, ne it never jump scares you though, that face, mm -hmm. it, to be fair. I think the film relies on dread, like, a lot. And if you're not in the right... Like, basically, like, you, you need to be watching this in, like, a dark room. I know that sounds like such a cope, but you need to be watching it in a dark room with... And as bad, as hard as this is, especially not be for on your me phone. in today's generation... Yeah, exactly. No distractions. Because if... Uh, I got distracted once and checked my phone, and then for about 20 minutes, the film just wasn't scary because I was trying to, like, you know, phase back into it. So, like, the... When you see it, you'll shit bricks 
type of horror is, am I missing something in this photo? Like, what is it? And so you're scanning very carefully. You're trying to make sense of a photo that doesn't look like it has anything in it. And there might be like a face hidden under the bed or in the closet in the shadow. Do you know what I'm talking about? I remember about? looking at one of those once and it was embedded as a GIF secretly and it scared the shit out of me because it had like a jump scare in it. And then I just, I never checked those ever again after that. But I know the ones you're on about, yeah. But as you're watching this movie, you're looking at you're looking at a lot of shots that have nothing in them. So you're trying to find like, is there a little movement here? What is that? Did I see the pillow move a little bit? Is there something over here? Yeah, like, and that, and that, and the filter, as obnoxious as the filter is, that also helps with that because you see yeah. even less with that. The third internet type of horror is the .exe, like a cursed video game, right? Like where uh, you're, yeah, you're exploring some sort of world that is made by a crazy person or might be broken or whatever. This felt like, um, it kind of felt like exploring the levels of a of an ambient horror game. You've heard of no players online, right? Or nah? The theory that there are fake people online? No, 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 it, it, it's literally a game. It's it's like, it's basically what you summarized because yeah, it's one of those, another liminal space game and that blew up on, you know, socials as well, like TikTok. Another one. Yeah, because it was just like, you know, you join a game, there's no players online, you play the game on your own. It's like, oh, player connected, oh, now there's a ghost. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it, it's so good because that is actually the plot and it was pretty good, but then people dug into it and it turned into an ARG and I'm not joking, it's, it was something that sucked so much. It was like, the developer who made the game, his wife died and he put his wife's dead soul into the game. It was so bad. Again, Spooky. it's one of those, that, that's why I think, that's why I think this Skinner Ring is decent because it's like, it doesn't really show its hand that much. And I think anything, I, I know it's such an old saying, but anything that you can't see or anything that isn't explained, your brain has to kind of compensate with the information mm -hmm. and your brain will always kind of make it worse. No than wonder it you like is. it because you love Dark Souls and that's exactly what they do. They give you like 25% well, so of the story. The, the, the film's too long, I think. It should only be like, it. they should have cut it down by like half an hour. It, two hours for a film like this is too long. I think it's very kind of anti what horror films have become as well. Because I think horror films at the minute, they're, they're kind of shit. They're kind of mid. I, I don't really like horror films that much. I, in the cin cinema rink. Is it there? There's nothing scarier to people. What One of the things that's scary to everybody universally is the idea that you're missing something, that there's something dangerous here that I don't see, you know, like the tiger in the grass. And uh, there's there's this dangerous predator here and it's slightly out of sight, but I can't see it. Like people don't Cocaine like that. Cocaine bear. That's what, uh, that's what those thumbnails with the red circle, but there's nothing in the red circle. That's why that still works is people want to go like, what am I missing? I'm being told there's something I have to see here, but I can't see it. So they'll click in previous, like in the eighties, the seventies and eighties and nineties, there was a big fear of subliminal advertising that people were being manipulated by like one frame on screen and that like the CIA was programming them to think something, you know, that they're, they're that movie, they live if you put on certain glasses, you could see that the the billboards had messages that were programming you in them. That was the kind of thing. Like people were afraid of of capitalism and marketing and that they were being forced to consume. That was this big fear. But now there's more of a fear of like, you know, what would scare a Zoomer is like a Flickr account with like 2000 photos of empty rooms. And you're told that like there was a murder in this room and a crazy person uploaded all of these photos and their wife, there's evidence of where their wife is hidden in these photos, you know? So like, it's still activating that, what am I missing? There's danger here thing, but it's like a, a, this new generational version where you're staring at an image and you can't find <laughs> meaning in it yet. And this movie is just like frame after frame shot after shot of what am I missing here? Is there a face? Is there a clue? What's going on? Yeah, I think a lot of the film relies. I mean, again, it, it, it isn't just the entire film filming like a ceiling. That's most of it. But there is dialogue. There is like an actual story progression in the film. It's like the kids wake up like their dad puts them to bed, I think. And then they wake up. They can't find the dad. They go downstairs, watch some TV. And then like, you know, the, the windows and the doors, they all start disappearing. What, one, without spoiling too much, there is a monster in the film, but I think that's pretty much shown in the trailer. And I think it is like just absolutely depressing as well how much power this monster has. Because I was, I was talking to Jay about uh, Hereditary, which is like, I mean, that, that that's a that's pretty a good film. But, movie. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, have you actually film, seen it? If you, <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised. Oh, nice. 
Well, if, if you look back on it, you'll realize how fucked that family are from the beginning. They're literally up against a cult and then like a demon and the, the cult have been planning this for ages. They've literally yeah. had no chance. And if you look at it like that, it's really depressing. And I think up this film- destiny and prophecy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they never had a chance at all, but like they thought they did. But in Skinamarink, it never even reaches that point that like these kids think they have a chance because you've got a four-year-old and a six-year-old and no parents or, or anything for the majority of the film. Like, they are fucking screwed. And it's, it's really depressing looking at, it, <laughs> looking at it like that. Definitely. I, I, think it's, I think it's a good film. It's definitely a little bit less pretentious at times, and it could have been shorter. <laughs> That's but, why I didn't uh, like it. It's just art, too artsy for me. So, like, the director said, I want people to watch this on, like, an authorized uh, platform. It's like, wait till I get a deal for this, or... But basically, people were so scared by the screening of this that they like they were sharing the recording on a phone. So they're like a bootleg version of this movie was being shared, and people thought it was like traveling virally before they could even get. Imagine if all the versions that people have been watching was the pirated version, like that filter wasn't even meant to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said that like a virtual part of the movie was played in the festival, and so like people were sharing just an incomplete version of the movie that was just sort of showing the atmosphere but i don't know how that differs from the official version no i think that's right i think it was leaked from the festival or maybe it was shutter that accidentally leaked it on their youtube channel it was a distributor that leaked it so some people thought this was really scary and there's like a lot of replies that are like oh when this hits a real platform i don't want anything to do with this yeah i i think people saying it's the scariest film ever are just actually deluded it's definitely yeah, not it, it's it the is the first film they've watched or something yeah That's yeah like the other film they've watched is probably puss in boots or something i mean l like i said there are very sparse jump scares in the film there's only like four total and two uh two of them uh, are actually reused they they use the same sound effect of a girl screaming like back to back w one thing one thing i didn't like about the film that i really really didn't like is the film is so quiet the kids when they speak obviously you want to hear the dialogue when anyone speaks because it's integral to the plot even though it's not really about plot but you want to you want some kind of development right apart from staring at a fucking ceiling for two hours <laughs> So whenever the kids speak, it's very quiet. They did subtitle it, but they only subtitled about, I don't know, like 60% of the dialogue. So you really got to crank your volume up to hear like all the little stuff that's being said and all the little details. But then that's when they have the jump scares. And I'm not joking. The jump scares are the loudest jump scares I've ever heard in a horror film ever. Like it's probably a mix between them purposely cranking it up in the audio room, but also how quiet everything is. So you've got to max out your speakers. I thought that was a little bit slimy. After the first and second jump scare, I don't think another jump scare actually got me after that. It was just kind of like, oh, really? Like we're doing this, but- The first yeah, dialogue was... of the movie reminded me of the Charlie Brown filter like whenever an adult talks it's like wah, 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 wah. yeah yeah like there's a bit where one of the kids uh uses a phone to like contact someone on the outside and it is you thank god they subtitled it because it literally is like charlie brown's teach like wah, 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 wah. it's terrible but yeah i mean they don't subtitle everything but uh it is good. I, I watched it. There's definitely a couple of theories you can pull from it as well. It isn't just all like art house for the sake of it. But uh, yeah, there's choices I don't like. I mean, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Yeah, it's pretty shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if you if you tied a uh, if you tied an iPhone to like loosely taped it to like a cat's head and just let it uh, walk a few steps and then the camera falls and records this corner of the ceiling and just did that 2000 times, you could edit this movie out of that. Yeah, I mean, Towards the end, like I said, when when the house is upside down, it does look convincing. But again, it's because you have so little to see, right? Because for most of the film, the lights are off. You can't see anything. But yeah, no, I'd like to imagine the people that are giving it a 10 out of 10 saying it's the scariest film ever, they will probably go and see it in the cinema and then the film will fail to play. It will just be a black screen for two hours and they'll be convinced that they saw the film again. If you took two like 2,000 YouTube thumbnails and put a red circle and an arrow uh, and there was that nothing, it was at a random spot, and you just told 4chan, like, in one of these circles is the clue to finding a missing girl who's been sex trafficked. <laughs> like, that would capture the internet's attention and scare the shit out of people. And it's really just, it's just nothing. You're just having people, like, combing over photos trying to find something. So, yeah, yeah it feels like they, they grabbed a device here and made an entire movie out of it. It's like, it's a new horror device, I suppose. This um, Is there anything in this shot that I should be paying attention to? Does any of this mean anything? I just imagine the people who found it scary just, like, sitting at home and they glance at their ceiling and they just, like, scream, like, 
<laughs> I get scared of it. I mean, he did. The guy who made the film, he did say uh, in like a little, like if you go and see the film in a cinema, there's a little preview, and he goes like, you know, welcome to my movie, and it, and he says, you probably might hate this movie, and that's fine. The only thing I want from this film is for you to watch it, go home, and then not sleep. That's that's <laughs> actually what he says. Like it, it's almost like it's a troll, right? <laughs> and maybe it's just part of the like overwhelming amount of data that's online right now. It's like there's so much. Like imagine the Facebook account of someone who has like 30 friends and no one likes their photos. Like they're they're still uploading things that no one's looking at. You know, like there's all of this data being stored on servers. The average YouTube video gets zero views. So if you if you take that fact and exploit it and tell people like some of these things that are online, you should have been paying attention to them. You have to comb over all of this like dead unviewed data. Like, I don't know. I think that does scare Zoomers. It's like everything. Fear is just subjective. So if you're scared of it, you're scared of it. If you're not, you're not. You know, some people are afraid of different things. That's all there is to it, I think. Yeah. And well, it's some of it changes over time too with like what you've been exposed to and what like think about the what glitches what they mean to different generations so like something that looks like a corrupted video file means something more and is scarier to a younger generation than something that looks like a film that's gotten slightly off the uh projector you know like corrupted data if you were if you were trying to make a new horror film that was based off of like like a lost file that you just found it would literally be like a dot exe oh don't run this it would be it would be using like corrupted programs and and uh folders and stuff whereas an old generation the the older generation would be scared of like you know the ring it was like a tape that you shouldn't put into the vhs and play <laughs> like, Im imagine if imagine if skin and ring was just everything it's like you know you read the wikipedia plot two kids find a vhs tape they put it in <laughs> and then a woman climbs up the tv they run upstairs to escape but then a, a man with no face is. chases them and then an objective comes up saying collect the eight pages to stop slender man it is man because it goes <laughs> night it, it uses 1974 <laughs> grain and film errors it uses 1995 as the era it was set in and then it uses all like 2023 uh you're missing something in my liminal spaces horror i'm so happy there were no scenes like that like imagine the, the kids have like a crucifix and then in the next shot it's just turned upside down like that would i would actually roll my eyes I think that there's there's the only jump scare that I really this hated. This one, it's just Legos upside down. <laughs> the one I really hated uh, was the. I think it was actually the final jump scare in the film, and it it comes at like the last third. Uh, one of the kids goes upstairs because like he gets a voice like telling him to go upstairs, and then there's this phone. Uh, you, you know those little phones you'd use as a kid with a smiley face on them, literally in Toy Story? It just immediately cuts to the phone looking at him with this, like, the loudest ringing noise I heard in my life. Like, it was so obnoxiously loud. I literally just said out loud when I was watching it, fuck you. I, I just wasn't even, like, scared by it. I was just like, that's fucking obnoxious. The editing transition for it was terrible because it zoomed in a little bit as well. And it's just obviously that they they edited the eyes, like, in Photoshop or something, and they didn't do that great of a job. That was one of the... The funny thing is that's one of the more well-lit scenes in the film, and that's when it was shit. But yeah, I mean, like, you know, there's a couple of scenes that sucked, but overall it was pretty decent. It was good at atmosphere building, but again, if you took the atmosphere away, it wouldn't even be a film. It'd just be watching a wall for two it's hours it's barely a film to begin with <laughs> there's a there's like a a fair way to do a jump scare and a cheap way to do a jump scare and just playing a really loud noise after a period of quiet is that's cheap because you can make anything scary i think all jump scares are cheap yeah no i agree uh, there was a youtube reviewer called joseph anderson and he actually said uh they shouldn't be called jump scares they should be called jump startles because that's what they do. They, they, they just slightly startle you. And you know, in traditional horror films, you, you see them coming a mile away. You know, music stops, woman opens the door, build up. long, yeah. dark linger. Yeah, but like, that's what I liked about Skinner Marine because it never actually had that music play. So you never knew when it was coming because every fucking shot is lingering. And if every shot is lingering, like you, you, don't, yeah. you don't actually know when it's coming. I'll give you an example of a jump scare that I think is fair. In The Shining, when Jack comes out from behind the pillar and puts the axe into Scatman Crothers' stomach, that's a fair jump scare. Have you seen films where they'll do a double whammy jump scare, like a jump scare straight after another one? Like, like not a minute later, but I'm talking like two seconds later. I, I saw a film once called The Wolfman. I, I forget what it was. I think it was just complete dog shit. But th there's a scene where the main character is like dreaming and he gets attacked 
and then it cuts away and he thinks he wakes up and then there's just another jump scare straight after like i remember seeing it when i was like 12 i was like holy shit this is just terrible so the two of you were involved in a game that raised money that was going to be like it was supposed to be a, a half-life sequel but like unofficial and you guys did it, voiceover it's meant to be like it. a continuation yeah like Spiritual i don't think valve ever signed off I don't think Valve ever signed off on it, but yeah, they, they wanted it to be canon. But yeah, I, ma I, ma I made a video on it like, Jesus, I think like three or four years ago now, and that game was on release. It was absolutely horrendous. Like it was me, it was colossal. It was, I hate everything as well. It was Rice Pirate. Teamstar played the president. Yeah, oh God, I, I swear, I, I didn't even know that as well. I, I swear I removed that from my memory. I got Rice Pirate involved. I got you involved. Yeah, because I, got, Ri I Rice hate Pirate. everything involved. I got Keemstar <laughs> they involved. They must fucking hate you now. Chad was the person who got me involved because he met this bloke. His name was Birkin, and he was from, like, Turkey. He but works he for Blizzard to... now, you know. Oh, does he? Really? Yeah, he, he actually, his career took off after that. Like, I'm not even joking. He actually isn't rotting like most people. Well, he was a Turkish national that moved to LA and founded this game studio. And he asked Chad, you know, do you know anyone who's got a good voice and might feature in this game that I'm making be a voice actor in this game? He's like, yeah, I do know someone. His name's Colossal is Crazy. He's a YouTuber. So Chad hits me up. Do you want to be in this game? It's like, yeah, that sounds fun. I'll do it. I didn't get paid for it. I'm still to this day. I, didn't I get got paid for offered it. money, but I did say no, because I just, I could tell like how dog shit this is going to be. And if I was going to make a video on it, like taking money would look so bad bad as well he says well do you know any other people who would be good for voice actors it's like well i know a few people i don't know whether that'd be good i mean spoiler alert i think it's pyrocynical here <laughs> think it of keem star who can't nah, even my, read my voice properly actor was amazing it was like okay so if you could find some people i'll give you a percentage of the game technically i still to this day own a percentage i think it's four percent i own four percent wow. of hunt down the freeman i've never seen a cent uh, because I got, people, these, I got all these i got all the youtubers that Ryan involved posted. the only person i didn't get involved was sir because he was already involved. He was uh, at the yeah, same do, do you remember Sky Jack. Williams was in it as well? Do you remember I that? I got the script. The script was shit. But I was like, okay, well, I could do this. I recorded in a fucking cupboard with a shit Blue Yeti cupboard, microphone. Voice. And they told me to release the audio, send the audio raw. You're like a ship captain. But I had yeah. no and indication you... of where the character would be, who the character was. Just say these lines. Because apparently this sea captain was supposed to be a religious sea captain. I was told none of this. Did you just read did these he lines. get you, Birkin? Because yeah. I remember this. He got me in a call and he asked me to do my lines in call. And he was giving me directions like I was on a fucking stage play oh it was so embarrassing i i wish i recorded it no no he, he called me up on skype oh fucking hell skype jesus yeah and, and then he says to me like you know you're working for like a pmc or something you're very like uh trustworthy but you're very tired and i was like what the fuck are these directions you're telling me bro what the hell the directions didn't help didn't help the final product though it's not what does that mean you're you're tired and trustworthy what i don't know the fuck to do with that <laughs> clearly <laughs> no he just he just gave me the lines and it was like no direction at all read them and so i did in a cupboard <laughs> on a blue yeti no scope microphone i mean yeah. that was always one of my uh, goals that i would have loved to have been part of a video game and do some voice <laughs> acting for it like that sounded fun so that's why i agreed to do it well, one thing one thing i'll give him he was never like okay the business side i, I can't even comment on that because that was beyond sketchy but like him as a person he was always very friendly and stuff I definitely have nothing bad to say about him as a person. He was always, you know, never like condescending or anything. But then again, he's probably just glowing with joy. He's like, holy shit, you're actually saying yes to this project? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Free advertising. So help out someone who, who doesn't have the full context here. So you guys all got involved in voicing over this game. Where did this go wrong? Like, how did people start to see... Uh, well, the gameplay. The, the game was just terrible. Like, if it was a competent game and then it had our voice acting, it'd be like, okay, it's a little bit cringe. They got Keemstar and it's a little bit cringe. But just the, the entire game was broken. It wouldn't run. Uh, items were missing. Uh, save files would get corrupted. Think about everything that can go wrong with a game. There were bugs. The visuals were the, shit. Some, the of the, levels, some of the assets were stolen. One of the worst things. The voice acting was obviously not good. That's I mean, right. yeah, Keemstar was the worst because oh, no, no, but Keemstar we, we, was with reading from engine games, they do do that, though. fucking read. We weren't recording in any professional studio, so like, if you play like a mainstream game, to be game, fair though, Oliver, you're gonna have games do I don't know, like the latest lift God of assets. War Ragnarok, even though it was shit. But even <laughs> still, like, obsessed. you had the actors in the same room, so dialogue sounded authentic. You had it in a proper studio. But this was like we were recording. Yeah, you, you got to keep in mind that the, the source on some shitty microphone all separately at different times, not knowing our characters, with a script that was not even good to begin with. So, of course, we were doomed to fail from the beginning.
so did the game become a meme and get all this attention because of the famous people that voiced it over? I mean, that was like 25% at least of it, right? I mean, it was just a shit game as well. Riddled with bugs, stolen assets. Hang on, hang on. You keep saying stolen assets. Source games keep lifting assets from other games. I'm literally playing a game right now that has nothing to do with Valve. They use the source engine and they reuse tons of assets from Half-Life. It's a common thing. It's allowed. Yeah, no, but apparently they stole assets from Black Mesa too. Black Mesa. Yeah, that was that was made it? by Crowbar Collective that Valve Valve actually gave them their blessing. So yeah, if they're lifting from them, then that's, yeah, that's not good. But yeah, I mean, I think the reason why it blew up as well is because apart from our voice acting, that definitely prepared held it but i think the initial spark is like how anything to do with like valve and source it's just you know how much of a diehard community there is right i mean like look at tf2 the game's like 12 years old or whatever and like it still has such a huge following and stuff just anything to do with valve and its association people go crazy for and i think when they saw and also the, the fact that we never got a conclusion to half-life which is one of the biggest fps games ever right like it you know valve kept kind of saying oh episode three will be out soon because there was half-life 2 episode one and episode two and then they kept saying episode three is going to be out soon but they never officially said it wasn't so everyone was kind of just thinking oh my god you know and instead of growing up and like having kids and having a life that they're valve fanboys so no they'll just sit on the computer all day <laughs> and wait that's that's what i did well it's also because valve have a track history of releasing very very polished games oh uh, you know the meme though right they can't count to three so it's no, like no, no, we've talked about this before two. we're not doing it again <laughs> so what i was trying to say was half-life valve sorry have had a track history of releasing very very polished games they have a very diehard fan base so when hunt down the free minutes released a game that is pretty much the polar opposite of everything that half-life had tried to achieve thus far I mean, it's a game in the same universe, then obviously the fan base were going to be pissed, and that's going to be a highly contributing factor to why the game became as infamous as it did. The, the reason why it was so successful and why everyone hated Hunt Down the Freeman is because everything... Okay, so let's look at Half-Life 2, for example. The shooting in Half-Life 2, the combat, is probably the shittiest part of the game. It's really bad. It's really weak. Like, weapons don't feel like they have, like, punch or impact. Weapons are inaccurate. The combat really sucks, but... Everything else about the game is like amazing and it still holds up. Uh, like the world interaction, like usually in, you know how many first person games you get or like even third person games you can like, when you're not in combat, you can just interact with shit like light switches and you know coffee makers and stuff and it's so pointless but it just makes the world feel a little bit more lived in. And then in Half-Life 2, you had Alex who you with the whore bag and <laughs> she had like hundreds of lines of dialogue and so did all the characters it just makes the world feel a lot more like alive compared to you know static running room shoot everyone running room shoot everyone and hunt down the freeman like had the combat of half-life 2 but none of the actual good dialogue i mean i mean for, okay here's a good example hunt down the freeman had fucking cutscenes. that's terrible like you're, you're literally taking the immersion out there like because in in Half Life Two you'd go up to someone press E and then they'd speak to you and shit and you could speak to them during combat outside of combat but it just felt a little bit less like you're just going from a cutscene to shooting cutscene to shooting so like the entire reason we're talking about this they released a change log where they're uh, redoing a lot of the game and one of the changes they're making is they're removing my voice line so okay th this is very sad this is very sad. <laughs> I don't Press blame them. Please, at please all. comment. Please comment. You're Press sad. sad, sad. mp 3 Yeah, it's kind of a half truth though. So like, what they're doing is uh, in that cutscene, that fa that famous cutscene that got me an Oscar. It's still in there, isn't it? That's still in there because that's like hard coded <laughs> into the game's files. Or they literally, apparently, they tried to scrape it out and they just can't, so they <laughs> left it in there. But th there's a bunch of like me talking as like random. Oh, that's right. When you're on the ship, uh, halfway through the game, like with your entire army. Every single one of them is voiced just by me, and I've only recorded like two voice lines. So it's fucking horrible. <laughs> it's literally me just saying yes, Captain, or something like that, just over and over. Like, and everyone is voiced by me. So what I think they're gonna do is like remove it's me funny. entirely, and then they're gonna like actually get. They're gonna probably have the character say nothing, or maybe get like a couple people to actually add the lines in there. But I mean, I, I kind of appreciate it how they just haven't completely left it to rot because it's gone from like something that was vilified and hated to being like, okay, this is still shit, but it's kind of funny shit. So you voiced I, like, like you voiced like, hundreds of NPCs. It, when they're done with it entirely, I'm probably going to do a, a video on it, like a main channel video. Is removing your voice a spiteful reaction to you making videos that criticized it? I I was thinking that right, but the thing is, I hate everything. Also, did a video on it, and there's been no mention of removing his voice lines, and and he has a pretty like integral role. Like he's basically. The character you play as his like best friend. So you see him through like multiple points in the game. I only had like that throwaway line and 
a bunch of NPCs and th- and that's pretty much it. Were you harsher because you were like you were suggesting that people should get a refund and and no one else? Was? Nah, nah. I was I was kind of funny shitting on it. I was just saying the gameplay. I mean, I I hate everything. Was basically just saying everything I did, but probably even harsher than me. Because he hates everything, but yeah. I wonder if they're just trying to bait you into talking about it again. I mean, prob- probably, yeah. Because if, you know, because, hang on, let me check on Steam right now if the game's, because I might have been chatting shit, it might be free to play. People are still, is it a running meme in another community? Because I'm looking at the reviews and, like, there's a couple from, like, a week ago and they have lots of thumbs up. Like, the me- it must be, like, continually shit on and memed still. Probably by the Half-Life community or, yeah. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say that the entire Valve just degenerate community. Um, see, this is the thing though, right? Like, okay, so I made a video on it. I Hate Everything did a video on it. I think, hang on, let's have a look. So, I Hate Everything, Hunt Down the Freeman. So his video is on 2 million views. Mine is on 12 million. So like, again, like nearly... Jeez. Well, like 15 million people have like seen how shit this is. Have a guess from Steam, because it's only available on Steam. Don't check. How many people have played this game at its peak? 12,000. Uh, 500. <laughs> that's it. 500 oh, people. No, no, I don't know. Laughing. I'm guessing. No, nerd's laughing, but it's 145. <laughs> <laughs> no one fucking played this game. No one played it. So it's a famous cult game that only... That no one's oh, plays. Slightly yeah. over 100 people have There's ever bought it. There's 2,500 reviews, so they at least bought it and refunded it. Well... Probably refunded it. Speaking of getting a refund, consider signing up to the To Be Honest Patreon. It's a wonderful thing with a wonderful Discord. Uh, well worth the five dollars a month. Several episodes ago, the Patreon roasted us by making a bingo card that had all of the topics that, uh, if we talk about them in an episode, you know, cross it off your bingo card. Anyway, I've been trying. I've mentioned this a couple of times. We've never shown it on screen before. It keeps getting cut. But uh, if this makes it in. They've it's made a bingo not going card too. <laughs> yeah, it's not. yeah. I will probably cut it. <laughs> it's gonna get cut again. We're gonna keep making you cut. do it for like eternity. You'll just keep, keep plugging it's the bingo yeah. card. This is just, it will never be this is just me like getting my organ eaten out by a fucking vulture every night, and it grows back and gets eaten. Again. <laughs> You're just bringing up the fucking the bingo card. I yeah, see we'll you, thro- Patreon. I see this we'll, bingo We'll throw card. it on the screen. If you get bingo, you have to subscribe to the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just the worst reward ever.